What's up everyone? It's Henry and wow, it's been a while since we've last seen each other. And in today's video, I just wanna give you a quick update on my second quarter here at the University of Washington's Master Program of Human Centered Design and Engineering. Whew. I'll start this video with the great news. I got an internship. Woo! <laughs> Yes, I got a summer internship that's 10 weeks long and it is UX design and research related. So I am very, very excited about it. Can't wait, cannot wait. All right, now we got the good bit out the way. I wanna break down the several reasons of why I still think the HCDE MS program is totally worth it. Now, first point, I came from a non-technical background uh, doing community organizing. I got a architecture history undergraduate degree. So making this transition into the more technical uh, field, you know, was, it was intimidating to say the least, but after two quarters, I definitely learned a ton. What I believe makes a strong candidate in this program is someone with great interpersonal skills. If you have that and you have the urge and the hunger to make the transition into the UX design and research field, you got this. You got this. Oh, by the way, congratulations to all the people who applied uh, for the HCDMS program and got in. Congratulations. I might even see you next year. Who knows? You know, but if, if I do have a class with you and we do go back into school in person, you know what it is. Say, say hey, hey what's up, Henry? <laughs> Here are some things that helped me succeed in the program and also helped me learn in general. The first point is you always want to be active in class. And what that means is because we're working in Zoom, there's the option to not turn on your camera and you, you could just sit in the background and stay silent. In many occasions where the class doesn't seem to be very interactive, maybe the energy is not there, we often feel like, oh man, this class is just not worth it. Like, why am I here? But you have to think of it as this way. The class is only as good as you make it. And what that means is, if you don't participate, there's no one else to blame but yourself. So if you want the class to be exciting, fruitful in knowledge, and just very engaging where you can build relationships with your classmates and your professor, speak up. Because what I learned is, this master program is a bridge for you to grow in the work life. And the work life means having to start up conversations with people who you might not even know. So this is good practice. In class, if there's a certain discussion where you, you have ideas or you just want to throw a question out there or just say what's on your mind, do it. There's no loss in it. It's just total practice. And this also means when you have interviews for internships, you won't be as nervous for those because you're, you're kind of getting that nervous feeling out in class. Like you don't know these people to begin with, but as you talk more and more with each week to come, your confidence builds and you just feel like you got this. Like you know the stuff and you trust yourself. I think that is the most important thing. So like the wise philosopher once said, you miss all the shots that you don't take. Tip number two is learn what design language is. Now this seems very confusing and you might be thinking, what is design language, Henry? What are you talking about? Now let me tell you this. When I first started a program, I wanted to be proactive and I wanted to learn software programs that would help me become a successful designer. So I looked into things like Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Figma. These are all great programs that you can use, that you can utilize to create uh, prototypes and flyers and cool visual designs. However, they are just tools. Now, as a new designer and someone who's transitioning from a non-tech background into the tech background, design language is how things are committed visually through feel, touch, through what you hear, what you smell, and what you taste. So essentially, the five sensory that uh, humans have. So an example of that is if you go on YouTube, you know exactly where to look if you want to look for a certain video. Let's say you want to look for cat videos. 
you know where to go to look for cat videos. Uh, if you want to look for the comment sections for feedback from people, you know that you scroll down and look for people. And lastly, if you know that you want to pause the video, you know what to click to pause the video. These are all design language components. Essentially is when there is good uh, design, it communicates very clearly to the user, which is you. So if you wanted to pause this video, let's say you want to pause right now, you know to hit the space bar or click on the pause button or click on the screen. You know that because the interface, which is YouTube, clearly communicates how it works so that you can utilize it the way that you want to. So those, that's a very simple breakdown of design language. Look it up, design language, and if you want to, and if you're not in the program yet and you want to get a head start, design language is the way to go. The third tip I want to give is stay true to yourself, stay authentic. You know, when we're in this field, there's a lot of technical words thrown around and sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Don't let that get into your head. Stay simple, use clear communication, use words that make sense to you, that make sense as if you're explaining to a teenager. If a teenager does not understand what you're trying to say, most likely a lot of people don't understand what you want to say at all. So when you're in the program, you will be doing a lot of readings, a lot of conceptual, reading a lot of conceptual articles and working on a lot of theory um, based stuff. But let's just say a lot of complicated words will be thrown around. The most important thing is that you take away the concept. You don't have to memorize the word, memorize the phrases. Just understand how things work. Understand what the, the reading is trying to communicate to you and then process that in your head and then when you want to explain your own work and explain how your work relates to this sort of theory or uh, design process or something like that, you, you know how to say it so that other people understand. So bottom line is don't get caught in the complicated words or the complicated process. Make things simple so that you understand what's going on. And then when you present it, others do as well. Now, tip number four, when you're in the program, grades don't really matter anymore. And I'm not downplaying the importance of grade here. What I'm trying to say is, if you're putting in the work, you're doing the assignments on time, you're engaging in all of your courses, you ask questions, uh, you speak to your advisors, you speak with your professors, most likely you are going to do good. You're going to do fine. You're going to get at least a 3.5 minimum if you do those things, okay? Don't stress too much on getting a 4.0 in all of your classes. As long as you take away the, the key things being taught in the class where you're able to utilize them in real life, you're set. Because at the end of the day, you're in this program to get an internship to get a job in a UX field, not to graduate with 4.0. That's not the goal. Now, the last tip I wanna give relates to internships. If you were someone like me who came from a non-tech background, don't feel like you're undervalued. You are a bright individual on the right path to good growth, all right? So don't feel like you're not worthy of applying to internships starting from the first quarter. So as long as you follow the first four tips that I mentioned in this video and you eventually build a portfolio of your schoolwork where you can showcase your way of thinking, your thought process, uh, how you contributed to the, the project. It's most likely going to be a school team project. As long as you clearly showcase you know, those things, recruiters and hiring managers can really start to see you know, what kind of person you are. What I learned is being the best designer doesn't cut it. It also takes a lot of interpersonal skills because at the end of the day, when you're hired at an organization or at a company, they're looking for someone who takes that self-initiative, who fits in with the team well, who's able to promote and elevate the energy levels within the team so that at the end of the day, 
when we do all this work and where we ask ourselves, why are we doing this? You're able to respond because this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> so yeah, making that transition into the ACD master's program is not just about learning the, the skills and how to do prototypes and use Figma and Photoshop and Illustrator. It's about just being a well-rounded person. And for me, to say the least, this program helped me build perspective on the real world, how to be a good contributor to the team, and how to see things in the bigger picture. So yeah, this is an update on finishing two quarters of the ACD MS program. I hope uh, you enjoy the video and learn a couple things. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, send me a message on LinkedIn. But until then, I'm out. Peace.